so today's gospel, there was actually an option. Could have read the longer form or the shorter form, and I chose the longer one. And the reason why is because there's, in our gospel, there's such a, a natural movement from Jesus talking about marriage and talking about the beauty of marriage and the indissolubility of marriage and then moving into uh, the, the gift of children and what that means, to what it means for parents to bring children to Jesus. And certainly marriage is a reflection of God's love for us. Marriage is a reflection of God's love for us. The sacrament of marriage is not just one sacrament among many. It holds a beautiful place and a unique place in our faith. It is a re because it is a reflection of God's love for us. And as I look out in the congregation today, there are many married couples here and, and parents with their children. We saw the children go to the children's liturgy, and this is a beautiful thing. It's important that families come here on Sunday where they belong. Families belong here in church on a Sunday. Because you are leading your children to Jesus, and that's a, you're exemplifying what takes place in our gospel. Spouses' love for each other reflect the love that God has for us. And marriage is so beautifully natural and supernatural at the same time. It's natural for a husband and a wife, as it says in our gospel and in the book of Genesis today, to be joined together and to become one flesh. It is natural for the boy to meet the girl and for them to commit themselves to each other. It's a beautiful, natural gift that God has given us. But it is also supernatural. Marriage is supernatural because the faithfulness that you see within marriages, the binding love that you see within marriages, and the grace that you see in marriages is a gift from God himself. That faithfulness, that love, is a gift from God. And we see this so clearly in our scriptures as a whole. And the Bible holds marriage at a very, very high level. There aren't only laws about this. Certainly there's don't do this, don't do that, make sure you're faithful, don't, don't commit adultery, all those types of of laws are within the scripture, certainly, and these are very important, and they help married couples to stay on the straight and narrow. But there's, there's more than just laws. There's more than just marriage laws. Did you realize that the Bible begins with a wedding and also ends with a wedding, which shows you how highly valued the scripture holds marriage? you're probably thinking, yes, certainly there's a, there's a marriage, there's a wedding in the book of Genesis. There's Adam and Eve, as we read in our first reading, and there was certainly a marriage there, a marriage made in heaven, literally. But there's a wedding at the end of the Bible as well. In the book of Revelation, which most people think it's only apocalyptic, it's only about how the world is going to end in fire and brimstone. And the book of Revelation isn't like that at all. What the book of Revelation is explaining is what heaven is going to be like. And what is heaven going to be like? There's going to be a marriage feast. And who is the marriage feast for? It's for Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. The church, all of us, we are the bride of Christ, and we are called to be in relationship with Jesus. And that's what our whole faith is about, that, that we as humans are elevated by the sacraments. We are made holy, we are sanctified, so that we can be a spotless bride for Jesus, so that we can be with him. That's what it's all about, and that this is a beautiful dynamic of love. We know that God is love, and he showers down his love on us so that we can love him in return. And so now we can see how marriage is a reflection 
of the love of God. God gives us his love so we can give love back in return to God. Brothers and sisters, we were created for love. So the first thing that God does for humanity is institute the gift of marriage with Adam and Eve. And because we were created for love, a love that we cannot know the infinite depths of, therefore we are created to love God, who loves us infinitely. And notice that in my homily, I haven't even mentioned divorce yet, which was that theme is very prevalent in our gospel today. It's because Jesus is on to something. He wants to build up marriage to the height that it, where it really is. That there's a, a beautiful dynamic of God's plan for all of creation. That his love for the church and how marriage is a reflection of that love that God has for us. God's love which is free, total, fruitful, and faithful. And marriage which is a reflection of that to be free, total, fruitful, and faithful. And certainly, we, we cannot ignore that there are divorce, there is divorce in the world. There is annulments, and these are necessary at times. These are necessary at times. We have to know the prudence to, to know when they are necessary. But even these, divorce, annulments, and, uh, and the breaking up of relationship of marriage, even this shows that there is a missing piece that wasn't quite there in the marriage. And certainly no marriage is perfect, but to be imperfect is human. But to be perfect is divine. As I said, there's that natural element in marriage, but then there's also the supernatural. So it is a good thing that in marriage, God is at the center of the two who are joining themselves together. God must be at the center of marriage. Husbands and wives, make sure that God is at the center of your love and your relationship. Parents, make sure that God is at the center of your families. God is the key. God is the answer. How do you allow God into your lives, into your relationships, into your families, outside of Sunday Mass? How do you talk about God with your children, with your families? Is it a regular conversation? Parents, you are the primary teachers of the faith for your children. You are the primary teachers of the faith for your children. We have all these wonderful programs in the church. We have religious education, family faith formation, generations of faith, we have St. Gregory's School. There is all these Catholic high schools and Catholic grammar schools. All this is at your disposal. But it's still only a piece of the puzzle. Parents, you have to teach your children about Jesus and what it means to come to him. Jesus told his disciples that to let the children come to me. And so that's your responsibility to be able to bring children to Jesus, to come to know him. And that is by your word and your example. This is what God calls us to do. And he shows us the beauty and the height of the sacraments. And certainly today in our readings, he shows us the beauty and the height of the sacrament of marriage. And so let us pray that much grace will be given to married couples and to families so they may reflect the love of God, which is infinite and beautiful.